Hello friends. In today's video, let us learn how we can make a component move in any nonlinear path in motion study. Let's see where we need to apply this knowledge of transversing a component along a nonlinear path. We might be needing the robot arm motion which is generally not linear, an animation of a vehicle in a curved path or motion of objects on a conveyor belt. Though this tutorial does not cover everything regarding these motions, we get an idea about how to grasp the x and y coordinates. Along with this, you probably have to know more about contacts, x and other things for applying them into these major applications. So let us start by creating these two components. The first component I'm calling it as path. So I'm taking the slot option. This is going to be the path that my component has to take. So you can see this is a nonlinear path. Now I'm just going to create some support or some system on which it is going to drive. You can as well skip these steps for two minutes if you're familiar with designing. So this is the path. So I'm going to extrude these two parts so that I form a platform kind of thing for the path. So here is my path or track. Now I'm going to give some colors to this. I'm going to give a different color to the path. So here is the path. So I'm changing it to blue. So now I'm going to create another component, the component which has to drive along this path. I'm going to call this new part as button because it's a small button kind of thing. Optionally, you can give a fillet to this. So here I have these two components. Now I'm going to take an assembly file save it as drive path and then I'm going to bring these two components. So first I'm bringing the path component. For aligning it I need to switch on the origin. So I'm going to the path components itself because I'm not able to see the origin. So here I can switch on the origin, come back to this part, get the latest version of it and here I can see the origin. So these two origins I have given a rigid joint. So now I'm bringing the button part. So now this button part has to move on this path. So first of all, I need to place it on this path. So for this, I'm taking planar path because it will be traveling in this on this plane. So 
so now it is exactly placed now it has to move on this path so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble and motion study and here you can see that I have two options to move it in X direction and Y direction so let me give some random values so that you understand how it is going to travel so this is the traveling path in the X direction at the same intervals it has to travel even in Y direction so I'm going to the second planar option and here I'm going to give two different dimensions now here if you see I have taken some random values but this is not the path that I'm looking for so for exactly making it travel through the circular path I need to know the X and Y coordinates exactly so for this I'm going to use a third-party software get data graph digitizer is a software that I'm going to use now so I'm going to their website and I'm going to download it you can click on the download button and start download button then this software exe file will be downloaded which you can run and open it this is a free tool for getting the XY coordinates we first need to take the path as an image to the software so for this I'm using a new sketch and I'm going to project the path which I need so I'm saying OK I'm going to switch off the previous sketches and bodies now I can take a snapshot of this path I'm using snipping tool you can use any other screenshot capturer I'm going to save this in the get graph digitizer application let us open the image here you can see I have XY coordinates table here I'm going for operation set the scale so here I'm going to identify X and Y minimum and maximum values so here in the small window I'll be able to zoom and I can see the point that I'm snapping to so this is going to be my X minimum which is 0 here is where my path is going to start now I'm going to click for X maximum so the second point that I'm going to snap is automatically going to be taken as X maximum here instead of X maximum 1 I'm going to take 180 because it is 40 plus 40 plus 100 now Y minimum I'm going to choose this point actually it should be this point which is going to coincide but it is going to lie outside the path so I'm going to take this as the X minimum value just remember that what we have taken we have taken almost 40 steps less than our original starting point so Y maximum value is 80 so here we can see now I'm going to say OK now let us go to point capture mode I'm going to capture these points on the curves so here it is point capture mode I'm going to pick some points here for accuracy actually we have to pick many points so that we get exactly the curve but I'm going to randomly choose some points just for giving an idea on how to snap these X and Y coordinates so here is going to be my first point so here you can see X and Y how much they will be according to the X minimum and maximum value that we have entered we can get from this table so I'm going on picking these points throughout this curve in the right side corner down window I'll be able to see the exact points in a zoomed way so that I get it more accurately now 
now I'm going to come to the first point. Okay, so here on the whole I have picked 15 points. Now these points can be taken up on a sheet of paper or you can actually export them to Excel sheet also and I'm going to enter these X and Y values in the motion study. So I can export data using this option. So I can save it in Excel sheet also. Now let us come back to the fusion. So here we have this components. I'm going to assemble motion study. I'm going to pick this planar joint and here you can see I can alter three degrees of freedom. We are not going to change any angle. So the first two are our point of concern. So the first one can be X or Y. Please check whether it is X or Y. Then we need to give these points just now which we have tracked. Here you can see I have taken 15 points. So at around 6 seconds each I am going to apply one point. So let's start. So at X we have around 2.69 that is at 6 seconds I am going to start my first point. So at 6 seconds, I'm going to enter two point six. So it's almost two point seven, so, but I've entered two point six. Similarly, at twelve seconds, I'm going to enter my second X point. So here you can see that I have got at as minus. So I'm going to change the sign. Currently I'm moving only X. So at 12 I'm going to make it. Minus 15. It is, which is actually 14.9 so I'm making it 15. So here you can see in which direction it is moving. We are getting only the X coordinates because currently we are changing only X. After I have entered all the points, now you can see how this is going to look. So let's run and see. You can see the change in motion. So it is currently moving along X direction only. So now we have to enter the Y values. Similarly, now at each six point or six second we are going to enter the value of y that we have got from the digitizer. So now keep in mind the distance. So currently the values that we are going to add we have to subtract 40 from it because we have started at a point less than 40. The y minimum point that we have taken. So here instead of the 74 instead of 54 I'm entering 54 minus 40 that is 14 so here you can see it has come down so I'm going to enter minus because first I want it to go in clockwise direction so I'm entering minus 40 okay similarly the second it is 72 so I am entering 72 minus 40. I hope it is clear why we are subtracting that 40 because we have taken the y minimum from below. So the coordinates that the software has shown from that we need to deduct 40. Now after entering all the values of x and y according to the digitizer software we can run this program and see how this path has been animated. So here we go. It's almost accurate but the accuracy actually increases with the number of points that we are taking. 
So here you can see how the values are changing. When we make this motion slower, we can see the small error. Hope you apply this in many other applications. Please subscribe to the channel for getting more insights into Fusion 360.